Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We are recording today's session, so if you have to leave early, no worries, we will get this posted for you. Uh, for those that I don't know, I'm Carrie Metters. I'm the Senior Director of Technology and Training here in University Personnel. And I'm just going to kick things off here with a little housekeeping today. This is a webinar, so you won't be able to use your chat feature. However, you can put any questions that you have in the Q&A feature. It's one of the functions down on your toolbar. So if you have a question for us during the session, feel free to put that in the Q&A. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the session today. Um, any questions we haven't gotten to, either from the ones you submitted earlier or the ones you submit today, we will combine everything into one spreadsheet and get those all posted for you so you can review all of the questions and all of the answers. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and kick things off here. I'm gonna turn it over to Joanne Wright, our Senior Associate Vice President. Joanne. Hi, good morning. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, this is an exciting time of year. It's open enrollment. Uh, it's the time of year when we need to think about benefits, what we are going to be doing for next year's benefits, uh, and a time for you to get information from us about all the options that you have. There are about 10 days left, I believe, in the open enrollment period. It goes to October 14th, so mark it on your calendar. If you have not yet done your open enrollment, any changes or anything, and remember some things will roll over, some things will not. If you don't go in there and look at them and change them and submit them, then um, go ahead and do that as soon as you can because you don't want to get caught at the deadline and realize in January that you didn't get the benefits you wanted to have. Um, before we get into the benefits portion of this, which is the main focus of this, I did want, just want to address um, hybrid work schedules because we have been getting um, some questions on that. So could you go to the next slide, please, Carrie? The hybrid work schedules for 2023, I know this is, you know, big, people are thinking about this a lot. Um, we've been doing this for, I guess, a year now, or a little over a year now, but things are going along, and these are going to continue as long as appropriate service levels are provided, and so we're often talking to people about this. Our mission is at the forefront, so fulfilling the SJSU, SJSU mission of serving our students is the most important um, uh, concept that we need to consider when we're arranging hybrid schedules, so if things aren't working in a hybrid schedule, then we need to, you know, readjust. Uh, if they are working, the service levels are provided, then it's okay to continue. If you have particular issues, then we will talk to you individually, and, you know, if managers or you know, people have questions about it, we can talk about those items. We do uh, want uh, and expect that, you know, welcoming and training new employees should be considered when hybrid schedules are uh, started. Sometimes a new employee might need to be, have in-person or be on campus for a bit before we start that hybrid work schedule. So that those are things that need to be considered. Um, again, with full commuting uh, schedules, those that type of plan would need to be approved at various levels and a full uh, plan written out about what the um, uh, plans are for space, you know, how that serves the community, how it serves our students. So, but again, the hybrid work schedules are ongoing and are continuing, so not to worry there, but we do you know, want to make sure that all of our appropriate service levels are provided for. So if there's changes that need to be made, then we would address those as issues came up. So that's what I wanted to say about hybrid work schedules, but now I wanna turn things over to our benefits topics. And first, um, I wanted to introduce the benefits team. Many of you probably know your individual benefit rep, uh, you may have had maybe more than one benefit rep during your time here, but I just want to go through um, the team right now. So unfortunately, Anita Vasquez, our Senior Director of UP Operations, who oversees benefits, is unable to be here today. Many of you know her, uh, but she does oversee the benefits team. But we have a fearless benefits lead, Marie Garcia. She is extremely knowledgeable, uh, knows so much about benefits. I go to her whenever I have a benefits question. And yes, I do have benefit questions, uh, just like everybody else, but she is extremely knowledgeable. Actually, I could go to any one of these individuals and ask. So if somebody's not there, I'll just go to the next one and ask them. But um, Marie is our benefit lead, and we have three benefits representatives. Uh, Christina Hill, she's waving there in her screen. We have Linda May, and we have Ruben Soto. They are all extremely knowledgeable, very helpful. If you have any questions, uh, you know, if, if you're assigned, you know, whoever your benefit rep is, you, know, you can just reach out to them. 
They will be glad to help. Um, some of you may have seen them at the benefits fair if you were able to attend that. So we're gonna just jump right in to some topics here. And we did get some questions from people and I'll just, I'll just start out with this one and then I'm gonna turn it over to Marie. But the question that people ask when, when rates go up often is like, you know, why did these rates go up and how, you know, why did you raise these rates on us, right? So I wanted to just be clear that the individual campuses, so we, benefits team here, does not make the decisions on the benefit options and their costs. So the options and costs are made, those decisions are made by the CSU Chancellor's Office and CalPERS. So we really don't have the authority to make these decisions. What we can help you with is sometimes you'll see benefit costs going up in one plan, going down in another, or staying the same in another. So you might wanna consider if benefit costs go up in the plan that you've been in, you might want to talk to the benefit reps about uh, you know, a plan that maybe is not as costly or not going up. So with that, and then Marie probably has things to add to that. So I'm going to turn it over to Marie. Um, again, Marie Garcia, our benefits lead. Thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. So as Joanne was talking about the, the costs and the options about our benefits, there's many factors involved in why they increase. It's medical inflation, pharmaceutical inflation. Um, it could be that the health plans are opening up to different service areas, which more members are coming in. So there's several different factors on why um, the health plans are increasing their rates. But again, we at the campus here level do not have any authority to make any decisions on the options or the costs. Uh, for employee, employee eligibility, so in order to be eligible for our benefits plan for staff and tenure track faculty, the eligibility is your initial appointment must ex exceed six months and one day with a time base of at least half time or more. For lectures and coaches, you must work at least one semester at point four or more which is equivalent to six units or more in order to be eligible for benefits. You know, Marie, I just wanted to add in there too. So for that, uh, the lecturers and coaches, mm -hmm. if their time base is reduced to 0.2, for instance, sometimes that might happen with a class, mm -hmm. then during that semester, that time period, when it's not at 0.4, the eligibility for benefits is no longer there. Is that, is that right? That is correct. Um, your benefits will terminate if your time base goes below 0.4. At that time, our, our office will offer you COBRA to continue the benefit. Just want to be clear on that because I know sometimes that gets confusing when, when those time bases change. Mm -hmm. Also continuing with the eligibility, um, if you don't meet the primary eligibility, we do have ACA, which is the Affordable Care Act, which you may qualify for that with your initial appointment. Um, with an ACA appointment, you must work at least 130 hours in a month, or the appointment must be at least 0.75 or higher, regardless of the length of appointment. So if you have any questions about the, this eligibility, please contact your benefit representative, and we'll go over that with you. There's also other plans available to you if you do not meet if you do not meet the primary eligibility, um, such as our voluntary plans that you may be eligible for, um, and we could go over that as well with a one-on-one -on -one appointment with the benefit reps. For dependent eligibility, in order for any dependents to be added onto your health plans, it must be a spouse a registered domestic partner. With a registered domestic partner, you must be registered through the Secretary of State by going onto their website, completing the form, getting it notarized, um, and then bringing it to our office to add that dependent. For dependent children, um, it could be natural children, adopted children, um, any children that you care for under the age of 26 that are economically dependent upon you can be added to your medical, your dental, your vision plan, and any of some of our voluntary plans as well. Um, we will ask for documentation such as marriage certificates, um, you know, birth certificates for the children, 
and things like that. Um, if you go to the next slide, Carrie. Oh, I thought there was something else about dependence, but um, if you have any questions, again, contact our office about the dependent eligibility. I was uh, kind of just asked one thing because I know this came in, this question came in about a special needs child. Um, is it different for a special needs child who has dependency needs past the age of 26? And if, for instance, if somebody, um, would that child be able to continue on benefits when somebody retires? What's, what's the rule about that? For disabled children are covered. However, when you are hired here, um, there are additional forms you must complete. Um, those forms will be completed by the doctor and then sent on to CalPERS for approval. Um, your dependent must be deemed disabled before their 26th birthday or else they will be terminated off the policy. So it is very important that you notify our office if you have a dependent that is deemed disabled so that child could continue on with the health benefits. If you are looking to retire, that dependent, if they are deemed disabled, will continue with benefits on into your retirement. Great. That's really helpful information. I know that people are, you know, have concerns about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Marie, there is a question in the chat that is related to dependents. Uh -huh. Does the child need to be claimed as a dependent on the tax return? So that is only if the child is economically dependent upon you and it's not your naturally born child and it's not your stepchild, adopted child. It's a could be like a niece or a nephew that's living with you permanently. Um, we will ask for documentation to certify that that dependent is financially um, economic upon you. And we will ask for tax paperwork um, and there's other forms of documentation that we'll ask for to add that dependent onto your health benefit. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So open enrollment, as you know, we are well underway. Um, so again, it ends October 14th at 11.59 p.m. on Friday. So please make your changes through one.sjsu. Um, this includes your medical and your dental coverage, um, flexible spending accounts, flex cash. Um, some of our other plans, like our voluntary plans, our vision plan, those changes have to be done through the specific websites. Um, and as we go through the slides, they will be on there as well for you to log in. Um, Again, everything needs to be done through 1.sjsu. The changes are not done through CalPERS. CalPERS is just the website that we um, refer you over to for information, resources. You could also log into your My CalPERS to check your account, uh, view your annual statement, check your who's on your plan as far as dependents, there's other resources within CalPERS, but any changes must be done through 1.sjsu. I just wanna make sure that that's clear. Um, if you wanna go ahead and, Carrie, if you could just, oh, you did you put it in the chat, the website for our I, website? I did, I put it okay. right in there for you. Great, so please take a look at our website if you wanna make any changes. Um, all changes are effective January 1st, 2023. Um, all changes will be reflected on your paycheck that you receive on January 1st, 2023. So just as a reminder, if you did any changes, please make sure those changes are reflected on that paycheck. If you do not see those changes, please reach out to your benefit representative as soon as possible so we could go ahead and look into what's going on. Um, if you don't have any changes to your benefits, most of your benefits will, will roll over to the next year. So your medical, your dental, some of the voluntary plans will roll over automatically. There's nothing that you need to do. Um, with the exception of the flexible spending accounts, which is health care and dependent care reimbursement, those two plans, if you're currently enrolled, you must re-enroll during open enrollment for those two plans to continue 
for the 2023 year. If you do not re-enroll, they will terminate on December 31st, 2022. And after the open enrollment period, there is no way to enroll you. So you would have to wait until um, the next open enrollment period to re-enroll. So please take a look at your accounts and what you're enrolled into to see if you must re-enroll into those plans. And I'm just throwing in, I just can't say enough how important it is for everybody to go, go in and do your open enrollment and make sure that you have the benefits that you want that are going to start January 1st, 2023. So if you if you want HICRA or DICRA, you know, it's like, as, as Marie said, really important to get those amounts in and they, they can come in really handy, you know, for childcare, it's pre-tax. Um, so just make sure that you go in and, and check those uh, as well as your other benefits. So just want to keep plugging that open yes. enrollment until October 14th. So get in there and, and make your changes or and confirm what you have. Uh, so taking action during open enrollment, who needs to take that action? So if you're looking to enroll into a health plan, cancel, re-enroll, um, this is the time that you want to do that. You could also add or drop dependents from any of your coverages. Um, again, if you have any questions, please see our website, reach out to our office. The deadline is October 14th at 11.59 p.m. You could go to the next slide. There you go. And then again, how to make changes. You would go onto our website, uh, one.sjsu. Go ahead and search for the benefit open enrollment tile. And then this is where you would make your changes for medical, dental, health spending, flex cash. Um, and then again, any voluntary plans. If you go to our main UP website, it will give you links to go directly into each plan to make those changes. Um, when you are submitting your changes through 1.SJSU, please ensure that you're checking all disclosure boxes and submitting or clicking submit in order for the changes to take effect. So for our health plans for 2023, we do have HMOs and PPOs. So the HMOs are the health maintenance organizations. Um, this is where you actually would choose a primary care physician within the network. And that primary care physician would basically coordinate all your care. So if you need any referrals, you need to see a specialist. That primary care physician would then refer you out. Um, they're a little more restricted, a little less out-of-pocket expense. Whereas with the PPOs, um, the preferred provider option. You have a little more flexibility, however, a little more at a cost, um, at a at a pocket cost. Um, you go to the next slide. Slide. So as I was going through the HMOs, again, choosing a primary care physician within the network. Um, all services must go through that primary care physician. Your copayments for all of our HMOs are fifteen dollars per office visit there are no deductibles for the HMOs. Now for the PPOs, um, there are deductibles and co-payments. Again, you have a little more flexibility to see any doctor within the Anthem Blue Cross network. Um, there are two plans with the PPO. There's PERS Gold and PERS Platinum. Um, again, you don't need any referrals. Um, you can go to the next slide. slide. Do the copays uh, vary amongst those two plans? The copays vary, right? Like you said, for HMOs are all the same, the fifteen dollars, but they vary yes. on the PPOs, and right? Yeah. Yes. So they do have different copayments. Um, so for PERS Platinum, you're covered at ninety percent, mm -hmm. and PERS Gold, you're covered at eighty percent. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to our office or visit our website. On this slide here, it will give you all the plans as well as the costs. Um, most groups want to look at the middle column where it says 2023 amount paid by employee. That would be the monthly cost that would come out of your paycheck, depending on how many people you have in your family. And then on the next slide, it just shows additional costs for 
the other plans that we have available. I do like how they have these set up because you have the 2022 cost right next to it. So you can kind of see, you compare, okay, did it go up? You know, how much? Or is it going down? So it's, it's good to kind of compare that too. And again, if you, you know, if you were in a plan and you're seeing that the costs go up, you can see the other options that are available in this chart, you know, what the costs are there. So, so Marie, we did have a question come in. Mm -hmm. um, someone says they currently have Blue Cross and they called their um, primary care provider's office to verify if they still intend to take it. And they said that Blue Cross and Blue Shield are still in negotiations and they're waiting to hear. So have you heard of any delays in confirming these carriers are for sure contracted with the CalPERS? I think they are, but I'll let you answer that. So there are some medical groups and hospitals that are in negotiations. One of them right now is Stanford. They are in negotiations with Anthem Blue Cross. Um, as of today, we don't know any more information than that. Um, we, we do know in the past that when they go in these negotiation contracts, usually they'll settle them. It's not a guarantee. Um, so what that means to you as the employee is that you do want to review your health plan. Um, because once open enrollment is over, um, if the contract does terminate and they no longer take your medical group or your doctor or your hospital, that is not a qualifying event to change a health plan. So you do want to look at you know, all the plans that are listed to see if maybe another plan does take Stanford or, you know, one of the medical groups that's under negotiation. But as far as I know right now, it's um, Stanford. And we could go to the next slide. Thanks, Marie. Mm -hmm. um, one quick final question. Did the employer contribution to Kaiser indeed go to zero and therefore increased tremendously for the employee? I don't think that's right, is it? No, um, Kaiser is actually right here at the top. So for 2023, employee only is zero contribution. For employee plus one, it's $6.36. And then for employee plus family, it's about $92 a month. So for Kaiser, it actually decreased the rates. Right, so there's one of those plans again, like some some of them go up and some of them go down, right? It does, mm -hmm. Yeah, different years. Thanks. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. For dental coverage, we do have two plans available. Uh, we do have a PPO plan and an HMO plan. Both of our plans are employer paid, so there's going to be no changes for 2023. Um, they will continue to be employer paid for yourself and any eligible dependents that are added on to that policy. Um, with the PPO plan, it does have a bigger network of dentists to choose from. Um, so that is the most popular plan that we have. We also do have the Delta Care HMO, which is a smaller network of dentists to choose from. Um, and also the way the Delta Care works is, you know, if you're gonna see a dentist, you're paying for the material costs um, instead of a percentage based. So please review the dental information if you're looking to change, because this is the time to do that. Um, and then again, no changes for dental as far as the cost. I just see a question, I'm sorry, and, and the mm -hmm. one that was submitted earlier, uh, which asked about um, increased dental benefits because of concern with co-pays. And I know that there's certain things that you, you know, there's, I believe there's no copay for, but then there might be other services that there might be copays for, depending on what the service is. There's certain certain things that are covered with the dental plan, and some that might, you know, incur some cost um, by the patient. Um, and this was this is a good up. That would be a good place to have your um, your health care spending account because you do that pre tax, and that would be used for any kind of copay, right? I mean, right, right. So the Delta Dental PPO does have a copayment. It's fifty dollars per member, 150 max per family. And that usually only goes towards services such as um, crowns, your preventative maintenance, like your cleanings, you know, your x-rays, that does not go towards, there's no co-payment or deductible for those preventative maintenance benefits. 
Marie, there's a question. Mm -hmm. Which Delta dental plan is the Delta Enhanced 2 that's listed in their healthcare summary? So under the CSU, um, the way it's loaded into PeopleSoft, it is Delta Enhanced 2 is the PPO plan. So that's that's the one that will that will show up in, in on your portal. Thank you, Marie. Uh -huh. And so the Delta Care USA Enhanced is the HMO? Yes, it is. Okay. And then there was a question about the health spending account, uh, about the balance rolling over year to year. I believe the answer to that is no, it does not. You have to spend it in the, in the year, and then you have to re-enroll and start the new year again. So you have to spend your full amount or you lose it. It's easy to spend. Yes, spend. I use it regularly. <laughs> Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. But it is, it is important to keep be mindful of the deadlines and what you know what the coverage year is and like you know when you need to file your claims by because it is a you know make sure that you use it all or otherwise you lose that portion that you haven't used and so it doesn't roll over. So you want to you want to track that, make sure that you're on top of that. Yes. So for VSP, um it, it, all employees that are eligible for benefits are automatically enrolled into the basic plan at no cost, and that's for employee plus their family. We do have an upgraded version, which is the premier plan. Um, there is a small monthly fee for that. Um, the plan does require for all dependents to be enrolled. So, for example, if you're in the basic plan, you want to upgrade during open enrollment you must include all dependents or else they will be canceled from basic and premier and will no longer be eligible. So just be mindful to add those dependents. And that the way you would make that change is through the VSP website. And that is on our, on our UP website, the link to go ahead and make that change. So you will not do that through your 1.sjsu. It's directly through the VSP website to make that change. There's a question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, another dental question for you in the chat, plus a VSP one, uh, maybe a couple. On the Delta Dental okay. website that says like find a dentist, what is the network for SGSU? So you would just either look under the PPO network or the Premier network. And that's for De Delta Dental. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we got a, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna throw out a question because I, I saw this too in the questions we received previously. Like how does retirement affect uh, mental, uh, medical, dental and uh, VSP insurance? You know, so if somebody retires, what happens there for all these benefits? So if you are eligible to retire, um, and I'll go through their retirement in a few more slides, your benefits could potentially continue on for a lifetime. Um, there is factors that we look at when you retire. Um, so you have to be vested. Um, there's also a vesting requirement for health insurance, depending on your hire date. Um, but if you are eligible to continue these benefits into retirement, you will continue all, you know, the medical, the dental, and the vision. There may be a small fee for dental, vision, and medical, but you will continue them into retirement. Great, thanks, Marie. Uh -huh. um, for the VSP Premier option, does that roll forward? It sounds like, Christina, you'd like to answer this one live. Roll forward or do we have to re-enroll? Yes, so I was looking to answer the, the question and answer, but I can answer it live as well. So Great. yes, it does roll forward. Now, if you want to cancel, you will have to go in through during the open enrollment time, contact VSP, and you can cancel the plan. Then, and then, of course, it's effective one one of whatever the following year is. So you would be able to cancel it when you get into your open enrollment page. You can select that edit button for the VSP, and then you. No. Okay. Sorry. Go. No, you have to go <laughs> into the VSP 
You actually got to be able to do it. Okay. So I know that I actually enrolled in the enhanced coverage this year and I, I, I went on my open enrollment page and I went through there to get to their website, but it doesn't appear on my open enrollment page. So, but, but for to cancel, you need to make sure you're going on the VSP page to do that. Correct. Okay, got it. So when you, when you go into your, oh, when you go into your VS, your SJSU portal, there should be a link at the very top of the page to our VSP plan um, to go directly in there to make any changes. Um, do keep in mind if you do enroll into the premier plan, um, effective January 1st, 2023, it will not show under your benefit summary. Um, this is considered a voluntary plan. So the only way you can confirm that you are enrolled or you canceled the plan is to look on your paycheck to make sure either that deduction is there or if you cancel it, it's the deduction is no longer there. I also had a confirmation. So I did you know, go through, got uh, directed over to the website. And then I got, once I enrolled, I had confirmation. So you should have, a, you should have a confirmation that you are enrolled from BSP directly if you're enrolling in that. So happy yes. to know that I did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I've seen a question here too. Um, is there a date of birth, uh, like how, if you have a spouse who also has VSP coverage, how, but one is better than the other, how is that determined? How, what is used? So for VSP, and this is kind of a rule kind of across the board, even for like dental insurance, when a dependent is covered by two plans or two policies, they have a, be, a birth date rule, which determines the order that the insurance is gonna pay. Um, so this could affect the benefit um, as far as you know how it's being received. So just as an example, um, you have parents, one parent's birthday is January 1st, the other parent is, birthday is March 1st. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna use January 1st birthday, whatever coverage they have, they're gonna use that one first, and then once that is exhausted, then they'll go to the second parent with a later birthday. So you cannot pick and choose which plan you want to choose, even though you have the dual coverage. And that's usually across the board with all plans on how they pay the insurance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So our healthcare and dependent care reimbursement accounts, also known as the flexible spending accounts. So for healthcare reimbursement, the annual contribution is increasing to $2,850 for 2023. So your monthly contribution, the maximum you could contribute is about $237 a month. Um, so again, if you are currently enrolled and you want that to continue, please go and re-enroll during your, into your 1.SJSU portal. So this plan could be used for deductibles, co-payments, prescriptions, um, any out-of-pocket expense for glasses or contact lenses. There's also a flexible spending account store um, that you could go into and purchase a variety of different stuff, such as Band-Aids, um, suntan lotion, all kinds of different stuff. So if you have a little bit of balance left, that's something that you may want to consider. Um, as Joanne said before, um, or Carrie, you must use all your funds within the calendar year or else you will lose them. They do give you a small grace period from January 1st to March 15th to use those funds. But after March 15th of the following year, you will lose any funds that you have not used and they are not reimbursable. Um, same thing with dependent care. Um, this is money that you're setting aside pre-tax for any type of child care related expenses or elderly care, elderly care expenses. Again, it does require an annual re-enrollment. So again, if you're enrolled now, please go into your portal and re-enroll. 
The maximum amount you could contribute to a dependent care is $5,000 per year or $416.66 a month um, out of your paycheck. Um, just so before we leave this slide, I'm just going to say for the, the flex spending in health care, um, as Marie said, so that, that, yeah, there's co-pays, you know, additional payments you're making on dental or, or vision visits, but there's also things over the counter, you know, pain relievers, band at CVS. So I go to CVS and I have a debit card for my flex spending account. And, um, you know, if I buy a bunch of stuff at CVS, including sunscreen or, you know, whatever, we all should all be using sunscreen and I use sunscreen, but um I can use my debit card first to take off anything that's flex spending eligible, and then I pay the rest. You know, it's not flex spending eligible. So it, it's, you know, there's there's lots of things that are actually covered there. Um, so it's all pre-tax if you go ahead and, you know, sign up for a certain amount and just, you just watch what you're spending. But make sure that you're, you know, watching your coverage period so you do spend your entire amount. Anyway, just my little plug for CVS, I guess, and sunscreen but, <laughs> and pain relievers. No, that's a good point. Thanks, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Marie, can you confirm for both HICRA and DICRA if, if a person and their spouse or their partner both work here, uh, is that, is like the max amount that they can contribute, is that a combined amount or is that per person? So like if they both had dependent care, for example, can they both do up to 5,000 or is it combined? So that is an IRS rule and it is 5,000 per household for dependent care reimbursement. For healthcare reimbursement, it could be per person. So somebody could do, the spouse could do 28 or the wife could do 28, 50, and then the, the husband could do 28, 50. Great, thanks. Uh -huh. So our voluntary plans. Um, these are the plans that if you are interested in enrolling, some of them is, for instance, the auto and homeowners insurance through California Casualty. You can enroll into their plan anytime throughout the year. These are just reminders, um, links that you could visit to look at their coverage. The MetLife legal plan, um, this one, if you are interested, you must enroll during open enrollment, or if you want to cancel it, this is the time that you'll want to go in and cancel that plan. Um, by confirming the cancellation, again, you would want to look at your paycheck that you received January 1st to confirm enrollment or cancellation of the plan. You do want to make these changes directly through these websites. This, th these changes are not through your 1.SJSU. Um, we do have our pet insurance. So if you have a dog or cat, uh, please visit their website to get a quote on the insurance. And then through our standard insurance company, which oversees our life insurance, long-term disability. Um, we also have um, group critical illness and accident insurance that you could purchase during open enrollment. We have a lot of questions coming in. Um, okay. Uh, quite a few about Hickra Dickra. We will try to answer those all in our, um, our Q&A that we send out later, because we've got quite a few coming in. You know, Ruben and uh, the other reps are trying to answer some of those online as well. Um, but can you, uh, for, the, for the health spending account, can you use that for out-of-network practitioners? Yes, you could. Okay. And then I think someone had a question if it could be used for IVF. Um, yes, any type of medical expenses out of pocket you should be able to use that, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. And just shifting a little out of open enrollment, um, just going over some other processes that we have here that we do get questions on, is our CalPERS dependent eligibility ver verification process. Um, as you are may be aware, um, this is a verification that is through the CSU as well as the state of California. So every three years, CalPERS will ask to verify any dependents that are on your plan. Um, however, once they verify your children, they should not verify them again. So 
If they've already done that, you should be just getting it. If you're, you know, you're married, you have a spouse, you have a registered domestic partner, those will be verified every three years. Um, so in doing that, CalPERS will send you out a letter. You will then submit the documentation to our office to have that processed. You will also need to provide supporting documentation as far as marriage certificates, domestic partner certificates, um, proof of um, address that you and your spouse or domestic partner live in the same household. Um, again, they do send out these letters 90 days before they are due. So I'm sure many of you have went through this process or are receiving the letters um, as we speak. So it does go by your birth date. And right now we are working on all birth dates that are in the month of November. I just think it's important to emphasize again that, you know, sometimes people ask, like, I just, I already did this, but I have to do it again, but it's a requirement. You have to keep re-verifying that. So that's why it comes out multiple times to the same person over a course of years. Yes, it, it will come out every three years. Every, even into retirement, you will receive it every three years. Um, so for retirement, which is the CalPERS, the California Public Employees Retirement System, um, this is a defined benefit retirement plan, which is a pension plan. Um, this provides benefits based on your years of service, your age, and your average final compensation. So when you are looking to retire, um, I would advise you to reach out to the benefits office, your benefit representative, as well as CalPERS. Um, to obtain this information, you could go onto your My CalPERS account. Um, and in that account, you could get an estimate, you could review your years of service. Um, there's all kinds of information that CalPERS allows you to view to prepare yourself for the retirement. Um, your vesting requirement for the pension part of it is five years of full-time service. Now, the vesting requirement for health insurance could be a little bit different depending on uh, when you were hired here at the university. So um, again, I would suggest maybe reaching out to your benefit representative, scheduling an appointment, and going over to see what you're eligible for into retirement. For the retirement process, if you are looking to retire, say, you know, in the next couple of months, or maybe you're a year, year and a half out, um, you do want to start looking at your MyCalPERS account to make sure your service credit is correct. Um, to apply for retirement, you do want to go online through your MyCalPERS account. Once you submit your retirement application, you do want to notify our office. Um, our, our office is the one that will ensure that your health benefits will continue into retirement. So it is very important to reach out to your representative. Um, to apply for retirement, you must submit your application at least 120 days prior to your retirement date, which is about four months before your retirement date. In order, if you do have health benefits at the time of retirement, in order for them to continue, um, your retirement date and your date of separation or your last day that the campus is paying you must be within 120 days of each other in order for your health benefits to continue. You do want to keep in mind that if you do have more than a 30-day gap, your, your benefits may continue, but there may be a lapse. So again, please see our office and we can go over that with you. Um, any unused sick leave that you have um, on your SJSU portal will convert to service credit. So this is a process that's done when you retire and separate. Our payroll office will submit that information over to CalPERS. Um, sometimes it does take a few months for the sick, the sick leave to apply to that retirement, uh, but CalPERS will work to adjust that. And just that, as an example, about 2,000 hours equals one year of service credit. So again, any unused sick leave will convert to service credit. 
and logging into your MyCalPERS account, um, preparing for your retirement, getting an estimate, getting information. Um, if you do not have a MyCalPERS account, please log in or click the link um, and you could just go ahead and create an account. Marie, there's a question. Uh, what is the minimum age to qualify for the benefits if you are vested? So in order to retire from the system, um, again, depending on when you were hired, you have to be at least age 50 or 52, depending on when you were hired. Thank you. Uh -huh. Beneficiaries. So this is a good time as you're looking at all of your information, your health plans, deciding what's best for you and your family. It's also a good time to update your beneficiaries. Um, so you could do that. Um, there's several different ways of doing it. Um, there are links here. So your final paycheck, if something were to happen to you, there is a form that you would complete and you could obtain that from our office here in university personnel uh, for your retirement, which is your CalPERS. You want to visit them online to designate your beneficiary, as well as any supplemental retirement plans that you may have, Fidelity, Savings Plus, and even our life insurance through the standard. You do want to visit them online to designate. Um, those beneficiaries. And I'll just emphasize it too, really important. I mean, we, we talked about the open enrollment period as being your health benefits checkup, right? So, but you also want to make sure that you're taking into account uh, beneficiaries to make sure that things go smoothly should something happen um, you know, to you and you have various accounts here. So that helps us to help uh, family members and beneficiaries. So go ahead and, and do that too. Make that part of your process. You know, this is your 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 checkup on all of these types of things. For your emergency contacts, this is actually done through your My SJSU. So you do want to go ahead and review that as well to make sure that that is all up to date. Um, just go ahead and search on one.sjsu and look for the tile, update my emergency contacts. And if you have any questions, you could always contact university personnel. And just as a note, those can be updated at any time during the year. You don't have to wait for open enrollment. And we wanna make sure we have the right emergency contacts. Heaven forbid something happens to you, but we wanna make sure we're calling the right people if it does. Yeah. A couple questions have come in that are probably worth answering for the whole group, Marie. Sure. Um, if I retire while I'm covered by my partner's or my spouse's health insurance through SJSU, how will my eligibility change, if at all, if I retire before them? Um, so could you read that question one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. If I retire while covered by my spouse's health insurance, which is also through SJSU, how will my eligibility change, if at all, if I retire before him? So it, will, it, it should not change at all. Perfect. Um, are adult children eligible to receive your pension should you pass away and you do not have a spouse? So when you apply for retirement, there are several different options that you would choose. Um, so there are options that allow beneficiaries to continue with receiving that pension. So that is an option, but there are so many different options. Um, that would be a question for CalPERS or to go onto the My CalPERS website to get an estimate, and it would show you which options would be available to you. And then um, there's another one that says, I'm about to divorce, I'm sorry. And I haven't listed any beneficiaries for my life insurance yet. I have two kids, how should I list them? 
do I have to list my current husband? So you can list anybody you'd like on your beneficiaries. Just keep in mind, if you do have a child under the age of 18, um, you do want to think about possibly, you know, designating somebody over the age of 18. Um, but it's not a problem if you designate somebody under the age of 18. Um, you do not need to designate your spouse. However, if you are married at the time that something does happen, you pass away, that spouse may be entitled to that benefit. And it's up to each individual carrier to make that determination. Great. Thank you, Marie. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And these are just some resources for you to take a look at on our university personnel website. Um, so it has our open enrollment, your benefit representatives. If you have any questions, you can certainly contact us through email or by phone. Um, I would definitely just take a look at your benefits, review what you have, and make sure you make any changes before Friday, October 14th. And take a look at these retirement. We did have some questions and the questions that were submitted prior about retirement programs, like for, so for the 403 and the 457. So you can uh, take a look there at those supplemental retirement um, plans. And I know uh, the annual contributions amount, uh, contribution amounts are set by the IRS each year, correct? Those come through uh, as far as like what your yes. max is, right? Yes, currently it's 20,500. Um, for all three of our plans, 403B, 457, and 401K. We have not been notified if that will increase for the year. We probably won't be notified um, for another month or so. And there's also the catch-up, right? The additional 6,500, I think, now? The catch-up for the over 50? Yes. So, so there's, there's a max there. Yeah, there's different features, yes. There's a Roth feature. There's the over age 50 option, yes. And we do have um, uh, uh, the groups that are running those programs are very good about answering questions and they do set up workshops from time to time, or actually it's usually in our training Tuesday, you'll see, or in a well-being Wednesday, you'll see some of those, those uh, webinars that they give or seminars they give, and they can talk to you one-on-one -on -one too about um, your options for those. Just some additional resources, um, just going on to the CalPERS website under the open enrollment, they also have a lot of information, a lot of um, publications that you could take a look at. Um, also, you could search your health plan by zip code to see what you're eligible for, um, as well as the health benefit summary, which will compare all the plans side by side. Um, the California State University also has an open enrollment website with a lot of information and resources um, that you could go ahead and take a look at at this link. And I have a bunch of those links in the chat for y'all. So you have them. I'm on mute and I'm trying to talk. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you still have benefits questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat. I'm gonna just quickly review uh, some employee discount information. We did have a few uh, questions that came in about that. Uh, faculty and staff are eligible for a number of discounts. And I'll put the link in the chat here in just a second. Um, if you didn't know, we have a whole page. So I'll put that in the chat in a minute. Uh, phones, travel, museums, activities, things like that. All, a lot of different discounts out there. Uh, we do have a page that kind of guides you to a discount code page. These are only eligible for fact. These are only available to faculty and staff, not student employees. So we do have it um, password protected behind your SGSU one login. So you do have to be logged in to get to that page. But the biggest question that came up was regarding the Spartan Rec and Aquatic Center or the SRAC. So this is a lot of people have they have asked for many years now since it's been open. 
uh, why can't employees get a discount? So SRAC is managed by the student union and it was built for and continues to be paid for by students and their fees. They pay fees every semester to use those facilities. We aren't paying any of those fees. Therefore, we have to pay a membership fee to join it. Um, there is no discount currently. Every now, at least once or twice a year, they offer a week or two week kind of trial membership. So you can test it out, see if it's something you wanna do. But right now there is no discount for that because it was really built for the students, right? And um, they do continue to pay fees for that. And it's a nice, nice facility. I know a lot of you on this call probably use it already. We would love it if we could offer you a discount, but it's not ours to offer. And they right now are not in a position to offer that either. So we will keep on top of that in case something changes and certainly let you know. But I know a number of you had questions about that. And um, I would just you know, pay attention to when they offer those free things and definitely take advantage of that. You may decide that you know, the cost is worth it. They do have a few different uh, cost levels for you. Um, Joanne, I don't know if you wanted to add anything more about that. I yeah, no, it, it is. I, I actually am uh, participating. I've been participating at SRAC since it was built, and there was I was able to get in with an early, you know, early, uh, uh, I guess, joiner fee or whatever. So it's slightly less than kind of what it is now. But uh, it is a beautiful facility. Uh, I was there this morning. It's it's you know lovely uh, equipment, uh, beautiful pools, classes that are available. Um, for me, it works because this is the way I kind of get my workout and I come here and do it first thing in the morning. Uh, otherwise, I don't know if I would, <laughs> would do it like after I get home from work. But um, no, it is, it is a great facility. But as Carrie said, you know, it is uh, this, it, you know, there's this concept of like, oh, it's free for the students, but it's not really free for them if they're paying student fees to use it. So that's the, how it's running through student fees. So that's why there's you know, cost to community members and employees. But it is definitely something to, it's worth checking out. So as Carrie said, during those free periods, and I think we just offered that, or they just offered it last week. There was an ability to sign up, you know, through the SGSU together week. Uh, I think there's a, there was the two week free trial period. So if you do get those free trials coming up, definitely try it out and see if it's something that you want to continue with. Looks like we're approaching the end of our hour. Uh, it's been. Um, we're gonna we're gonna post this uh, presentation, correct, Carrie, with the links embedded in it. Yes, I actually just put the chat, put a response in the chat with the links to the the link to the slides, which has all the links embedded. I didn't realize you couldn't copy and paste the links from the chat when the chat was disabled. I apologize for that. Um, I will uh, I will go ahead and post them all on there in case you want to just click them and open them up. But they are all embedded in the slides that I just linked in the in the question that I just answered. So if you look in that Q and A, someone asked the question about the slides, um, and we will be sending it out as well. So uh, we will send that out to everyone that was in attendance. We'll send it out pretty quickly. Um, the slides, since y'all were all here, and then we'll send a campus wide message with the link to the video and the slides as well as the Q and A that we didn't get to, and just have have it all in one place. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. Um, there's a lot going on with benefits, as you can see. It could be kind of it could be complicated and complex. Some of the questions, you know, retirement, all the things that work together um, for each particular benefit. So that's why our benefits team they're extremely knowledgeable. As you see, Marie is able to. She has a facility for um, just going through all these benefits because she knows it uh, very very well. As do the other members of our benefit team, and they're here to assist you. So please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, if you have any questions, because we want you to have the benefits that you need and the benefits you want and get you where you want to be with those. So please feel free to reach out. Again, thank you so much for attending. And thank you, Marie, for um, thank you. telling us everything you know about that. Well, you get us just like kind of the, the top part of what you know about benefits, because I know it goes very, very deep for you. So um, thank you very much to everybody here. And thank you very much for the participants who attended. And we'll get information out to you as soon as possible. And see you next time for Town Hall.